there really hasn't been a better time to buy a graphics card, at least the last several years, than right now. Literally. This is MSI's RTX 2060 Gaming Z. And while this is the least expensive RTX card you can get, it is highly capable, at least at the moment for RTX. Let's take a closer look. Now, this is a two and a half slot card with connectors for DisplayPort 1.4 and HDMI. There's no USB-C, as you see on the Founders Edition and higher tier cards like the 2070, but that's to cut costs. And there's also only a single eight pin power connector for the card, and it has a lovely, attractive back plate. Now, the RTX 2060 does not support SLI, so that'd be kind of a weird thing for you to do anyway. Now, the dual fan and heat sink on this thing is truly impressive, and, that, and it's allowed some pretty, you know, pretty good overclocks out of the box. It has six gigs of GDDR6, which is plenty for just about every title that I'm testing. And before we dive into the results, let me summarize our experiences with this card. First, it's stupid fast. It really is. It is a substantial upgrade over the six gig 1060. It's almost as fast as the 2070, weirdly which sort of puts the 2070 in an odd place, huh? Now, it's too fast for 1080p and 1440p. There are better deals to be had unless you want the highest frame rates or need RTX or deep learning or something like that. Now, in general, it's about 5% faster out of the box than the founder's version of the 2060. And you can squeeze even more out of that with more overclocking. Now, mine has micron memory, which kind of limits, I think, the memory overclockability a bit. But in general, it is great for 1080p, 1440p, and 1440p ultra-wide gaming. Let's talk about RTX for a second. If I boil it down to two sentences, RTX and Battlefield 5 is just unimpressive. A lot of folks equate RTX to being unimpressive, but have you seen Quake 2 RTX, the demo? It is mind-blowing. It is a much better demonstration of what RTX can offer a game than the slightly improved reflections or whatever in Battlefield 5. Now, there are some difficulties with the RTX technology because this is early and... You know, things like the number of times the path light, you know, bounces in its path or whatever. But in Quake 2, you really can experience dynamic lighting and all sorts of really exciting stuff. Now, modern games do a good job at faking that, though. That's why you don't really see RTX as being sort of transformative. At least that's my opinion. So, overall, the benchmarks are going to show you that you really should pair this card with a display that is capable of more than 60 FPS to get the biggest bang for your buck. If you're happy gaming at around 60 FPS or less, there are more cost-effective alternatives to this card. But if you like, you know, demanding games, 1440p ultra-wide, that kind of thing, and you generally want higher frame rates, this card is shockingly cheap for the frame rates that it delivers. It's, uh, Nvidia is kind of competing with itself with the RTX 2070. Now today, I don't know that RTX really brings much value in games. But the deep learning features maybe are nice, and if you're already willing to pay a premium to get the highest frame rates, up to 3440 by 1440, I think that, you know, for now, six gigs is ample. So that's why I say it's a crazy good deal. You could, you could do better in terms of dollar value, but it's so crazy fast that it's, it's sort of nuts. Now, from testing, the cooling solution here is shockingly effective. That means you can have a very, very quiet system based around this card. MSI has done a superb job with the cooling. Now, as we run through the benchmarks here with our test system, we're basically just using you know, MSI Afterburner to capture this. And the uh, OC scanner is another feature of the RTX series. The MSI OC scanner works great here. I was able to eke out another 5% performance improvement. So we're talking like 10% performance improvement in some titles over the Founders Edition 2060 does take a little bit of tweaking, you know, the power envelope, that kind of thing. But, you know, these are MSI utilities. Even if you don't have an MSI card, you're probably using MSI Afterburner or, you know, MSI's OC scanner or something like that because MSI makes a pretty solid card. But the benchmarks here, the benchmarks, I think, sort of speak for themselves. Um, I need to do some more, like, deep learning benchmarks, but there wasn't enough time to do that for this video, so maybe in the next video. But overall, the benchmarks here are pretty impressive. Now, I did fiddle with the settings a little bit, like in GTA 5, you know, turning off the anti-aliasing and that kind of thing to get those really high frame rates that was necessary. But overall, uh, this is an insanely impressive card. I mean, it's, it's 350 so if you want to look at it, it's like, do you need a $350 card to do 1080p and 1440p? No, but if you want a... $350 card that will do 
90 FPS at 1440p and approaching that on ultra wide resolutions, this is the card to have. So sort of a weird spot. I think the fact that Nvidia allows adaptive sync or free sync, if you want to call it, they call it G-Sync compatible, uh, also makes the case for this card a lot more compelling because we've got all these free sync monitors that we test with and basically it's fine. It's there's some edge cases. We did a separate video on that, but using this card with the adaptive frame rates, especially at those higher than 60 FPS values, like the Pixio monitors and the crossover monitors that we test, that really is a transformative gaming experience from just, you know, a few hours of, of gaming on it. It's like, wow, this is, this is really nice. I'm not used to gaming at like 90 FPS all the time. I'm sort of starting to see what people say in that. We also had some other folks around the office, you know, mess with it. It's very impressive. So yay benchmarks. So overall for the RTX series, the 2060 is a tremendous value. I think Nvidia is facing more competition than they really want to let on, especially with the crypto downturn. So you, the would be video card purchaser, and be choosy. Still, if I were targeting 60 to 90 FPS at 1440p, I would be hard pressed to pick a better value than this specific card from MSI. The solid build quality, the cooling, overclockability, it is pretty impressive. So if you pick up one of these cards, let us know what your experiences are in the forums at level one. I'm Wendell, I'm signing out, and I'll see you there.